Among all sorcerers in Jujutsu Kaisen, there is one that is different from the rest. His name is Gojo Satoru, and he exists in a realm entirely separate from those around him, operating in a league of his own. His capabilities and prowess transcend any standard measure, and even his strongest adversaries are terrified of him. So in this video, we'll be explaining all of Gojo's forms in Jujutsu Kaisen, starting with his early life as a prodigy and finishing with his strongest godlike forms. Satoru Gojo was born to the prestigious Gojo family, and it has been said that on the day he was born, the balance of power shifted. He was the first person in 400 years born with both six eyes and the limitless technique. The limitless allows Gojo to pretty much bring the concept of infinity into reality, allowing him to manipulate and distort space at will. On the other hand, his six eyes technique grants him extraordinary perception and further enhances all of his abilities. Considering how broken these two are, it was enough to prompt those in power to place a bounty on Gojo's head. Although we don't know much about Gojo's childhood, we know that he could sense Toji, who has no cursed energy, with Toji saying that it's the first and last time anyone was able to sense him. Man, even as a child, this guy was a complete monster. Five more forms are left, and the next one is Student Gojo. At some point, Gojo enrolled in Jujutsu High and was put in class with Geto and Shoko. Naturally, over the years, he learned how to use his innate powers, but wasn't yet at the point where he actually understood them. Nevertheless, he was fully aware of his own talents and was awfully <laughs> smug about them. Although this is one of Gojo's weakest forms in this video, even at this point, he was considered to be one of the strongest Jujutsu sorcerers alive. However, despite all of his power, he was still young and lacked experience, which was shown in his battle against Toji Fushiguro. While Gojo was returning from a mission, Toji suddenly impales him from behind, which is already pretty weird since Gojo should have been able to sense him. As the fight continues, Gojo realizes that he can't read Toji's moves due to him having no curse energy. Despite his best efforts, Gojo is eventually defeated, with Toji slashing his neck. It was brutal. From start to finish, the battle barely lasted a few moments, showing Gojo that he wasn't as invincible as he thought. However, in hindsight, Insight, this battle was the greatest thing that happened to Gojo as it led him to becoming even stronger than ever before, which takes us to his next form, Awakened Gojo. While he was slowly dying on the ground, Gojo gave up on fighting back and instead focused all of his energy on reversed cursed technique. This is a very complex technique that basically turns cursed energy into positive energy and is used to heal human bodies. Gojo wasn't the first person to develop this power. For example, his classmate Shoko developed it before him, but was unable to teach Gojo as learning it is different for every sorcerer. However, at that moment, on the ground. Gojo figured it out, the code of cursed energy. This instantly put him several tiers above where he was before. And once he was healed, it was time for his rematch against Toji. In this form, Gojo was visibly stronger and managed to effortlessly dodge Toji's attacks. In addition to his new healing abilities, he also figured out a way to combine his reverse curse energy with his limitless blue technique, creating the new red technique. Huh, that's the same color as the subscribe button. What a coincidence. Maybe Gojo is telling you to hit it. Anyway, this new technique technique repels all matter with powerful repulsive force and has twice the destructive power as blue. When Gojo unleashed this technique, Toji was shocked and badly injured, prompting him to call Gojo a monster. At this point, Gojo seems unstoppable, and while laughing, he proclaims that throughout heaven and earth, he alone is the honored one. What Gojo does next is something neither Toji nor the rest of us could have ever imagined. He uses both his blue and red technique to create the ultimate hollow technique, purple. This is the secret move known only by few in the Gojo family, and it has the power to literally take the target out of reality, instantly erasing everything it hits without exception. Needless to say, Toji didn't survive this. Okay, you're probably wondering, how can there be three more forms left when Gojo is already this powerful? Well, I don't know what to tell you. This guy can get as powerful as he wants, apparently, and he proves it in his next form, Adult Gojo. This is the version of Gojo we see in season one and in the movie Zero. What makes this form different from the previous one is the fact that Gojo learned how to use his domain expansion, the infinite void. Domains are the pinnacle of jujutsu and something that not many sorcerers are capable of. Although Gojo already became the strongest sorcerer when he awakened his purple technique, his domain expansion put him in a completely different league compared to anyone else. Even jujutsu higher ups are scared of his power and well aware that if Gojo turns against them, they wouldn't be able to stop him. At this point, Gojo truly believes that he is invincible. And when Yuji asks him if he'd be able to defeat full power Sukuna, he comes confidently says that he would. The first time we see this version of Gojo fight is in episode seven, when he is ambushed by a special grade curse, Jogo. 
After some unsuccessful attacks, Jogo eventually uses his domain expansion, which prompts Gojo to show us his. Infinite Void is revealed, and due to its sheer power, Jogo's domain is easily suppressed. So what is it like to be trapped inside Gojo's domain? Well, it's like being in a state of absolute, complete trance. The domain repeatedly feeds you with unlimited information, so you cannot think or move at all. The only thing you can do is just stand there, completely helpless, until you eventually die. Before we cover Gojo's strongest form in the entire series, let's first cover Shibuya Gojo. The Shibuya incident was carefully planned by Kenjaku to be Gojo's downfall. It is the point in the story where Gojo is put in an impossible situation. You see, during this arc, Gojo fought a bunch of strong cursed spirits. Now, although this usually wouldn't be a problem for him, he had one big disadvantage. Due to the many civilians around him, he couldn't activate his domain expansion. Although Gojo was fine without his domain and was winning against the curses, he realized that he couldn't continue like this as there'll be too many human casualties. So Gojo surprised everyone once again and did something insane. He managed to open his domain for only 0.2 seconds, making everyone around him unconscious. He did this because he calculated that an average human should be able to survive 0.2 seconds in his domain without any lasting after effects. However, this also meant that stronger curses wouldn't be permanently trapped in the domain, only unconscious for a few minutes. This gave him enough time to kill over 1,000 transfigured humans in Shibuya in less than five minutes and save everyone. Although Gojo didn't awaken any new powers in this form, he once again showed incredible instincts and mastered his abilities even further. Shortly after this, Gojo was trapped by Kenjaku and sent to the prison realm. However, this is not the end of Gojo's development, as when he eventually gets out, he engages in the toughest battle of his life against none other than the King of Curses, Ryomen Sukuna. And you can bet he gets even more powerful during this fight. Unsealed Gojo. As soon as Gojo is unsealed from the prison realm, he pays a visit to Kenjaku. But just before killing him, Sukuna stops him, and the two of them decide on a date for their fight, 24th of December. Soon, the promised day arrives. Now, although Hollow Purple by itself is pretty broken, in this fight, Gojo takes it to the next level. You see, Utahima's innate technique allows her to temporarily amplify cursed energy of other sorcerers. So when she activated it to help Gojo in his battle against Sukuna, Gojo managed to release his Hollow Purple technique at 200% of its normal power. Although this was a great way to kick off the fight, it doesn't hurt Sukuna enough and just burns off his arm, which is easily regenerated. As their fight continues, we finally get to see the long-awaited battle between their domains, Unlimited Void versus Malevolent Shrine. At first, they seem evenly matched, but there's one big problem for Gojo here. You see, Malevolent Shrine is different from other domain expansions because it doesn't create a separate enclosed space. Instead, it has the ability to create the domain without barriers, which was compared to an artist painting not on a canvas, but on air. Because of this, although they are technically evenly matched, Sukuna's domain goes beyond Gojo's barrier and manages to break it from the outside. This is a big problem for Gojo, as he is now completely exposed to Sukuna's slashes. However, once again, Gojo shows his <laughs> genius as he starts creating simple shadow-style domains in order to quickly heal himself and continue fighting. But then he does something even crazier! Instead of using his reverse curse technique to heal himself from damage, he uses it to restore his exhausted curse technique. Even Yuta freaks out when he sees this, because it shouldn't logically be possible. At the end of the chapter, even the narrator says that common sense will not prevent in this battle, as both Gojo and Sukuna are inconceivably powerful. Another thing that makes this form of Gojo stronger than the previous ones is the experience he acquired while being trapped inside a prison realm. We've seen this when he managed to shrink his domain to a really small size in order to make its barriers stronger. Same as how the prison realm is small but unbreakable. As of making this video, the fight between Gojo and Sukuna is still ongoing, but it's clear that it's the greatest fight in the entire series so far, and I can't wait to see what Gojo will do next. Click on this video where we explained all 12 cursed spirits in Jujutsu Kaisen.